out. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I think that uh, hopefully people will find us if somebody still is <laughs> looking. So welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to the third install uh, online installment of the New York Group Series seminar. And it's a pleasure to welcome our speaker today. It's Alina Vdovina from the University of Newcastle. And she is going to tell us something about uh, buildings, sister algebras, uh, and new high dimensional analogs of Thomson's groups. And before I give the microphone to Alina, I would like to ask everybody that uh, when she starts speaking, please mute, uh, mute yourself, mute your microphones. And if you uh, want to ask a question, then unmute yourself and ask other questions. So that's uh, how. Uh, we're going to do it, and with that, I'll I'm pleased to give the floor to Alina. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's a completely new experience. It's for the first time when I give a talk in this format. But before I start, I would I have an announcement that um, um, Olga Halampovi just um, um, became a LMS invited lecturer 2021. I just got official email today and um, uh, this is um, the, she will give a series of lectures uh, hopefully like next next year somewhere in june and it will be a conference and uh, we will be sending more announcements and um, so there are some kind of good good news um okay so let's start of course after after i send the title to Ilya. I started to make uh, the slides and I realized that it's of course uh, quite, um, quite a lot to talk about, but I would like at least to give a flavor of how all those subjects are connected. And um, I was, um, as, as you know, that I, I'm doing mainly geometric uh, group theory and uh, my sister algebra side, I kind of usually didn't give talks in, uh, uh, geometric group theory community because it's um, still slightly slightly different but then uh, it turns out that all those subjects are connected and um, surprisingly enough um, my interest in buildings and sister algebras are connected via higher dimensional generalizations of Thomson groups and um, so let's um, um, just start so of, of course i see already in the audience such uh, like experts in thompson's group so i i already apologize that i'm not going to give like a history and i didn't um, cite everybody so i just give very um very light um, touch um, of um, what what i know about um, thompson groups and their generalization so as you know, Thomson groups can be realized in like many ways in terms of operate, operations on rooted binary trees and subgroups of the piecewise linear homomorphism, homomorphism of the unit interval in uh, terms of prefix codes, which are sets of words with certain properties. But of course, there are many other ways to look at Thomson groups. Mm -hmm. But then also we know like many generalizations, for example, Brin-Thomson groups and uh, uh, so there are many uh, approaches to, to the subject, but then uh, what seems to be hard, it seems to be hard to compare the groups with, the, with the different, which appear in different contexts. And also it's very difficult to distinguish um, different groups and like really to find um, uh, some invariants. And uh, what, um, what I suggest, so um, in this talk, I was going to talk about the very general approach to, to further generalizations, where practically everything we know appears as a particular case, like in a relative recent joint work with Mark Lawson, it's, it's in archive, we were, like since end of um, September. And, um, uh, what I would like to suggest and kind of um, <clears throat> highlight today, it's like some C-style algebraic invariants to 
distinguish the groups, but this is like work in progress with different collaborators and so it's not quite um, quite written yet, but I thought it's really good idea to uh, to talk about this uh, to experts. And uh, so what is um, quite difficult that um, uh, the subject requires several fields of mathematics. So it's operator algebras and sister algebras, then semi-group theory, dynamical systems, representation theory, geometric group theory, but also geometric group theory from uh, like uh, two, uh, two fields in geometric group theory, it's like buildings and Thompson's groups. So don't hesitate to ask uh, questions, but um, so you, you see that actually just to give all, if to, to, to give all formal definitions, one would need a half, half of a year course, but I will, I will just try to, to give a flavor of the subject. Okay, and since it's um, still ge geometric group theory seminar, I would like to remind the definition of uh, cis algebras, uh, which uh, was given in um, 43 by Gelfand and Neimark. So just historically, cis algebras were appearing in, um, in quantum physics, uh, but still like the first um, abstract characterization was, was given by Gelfand and Neimark. So saying um, cis algebra saying B, it's a Banach algebra over the field of complex numbers together with a star map, which satisfies the following properties. So it is an involution. So if we apply star twice, we get back uh, the same element. Then if you have two elements um, of B, X and Y, then X plus Y star, it's X star plus Y star. And um, if um, so, Sorry, the second one, it's actually just doubled. It's a, it's a misprint. So it's X, Y star equal to Y star, X star. And then for every complex number lambda and every X, um, we have lambda X star, it's um, conjugate lambda X star. And then for all elements of B, the norm of um, um, X star, X is the product of the norms. I'm sure everybody knows what is the cis algebra, but just to um, remind the definition. And now another objects which um, I need to define, it's so-called prefix codes. So as I already mentioned that uh, there are many approaches to Thompson groups, but what I would like um, uh, to introduce it's um, so-called prefix codes. And I think this approach um, um, to Thompson groups in terms of prefix codes was um, done by Scott and Birger. So for me, for me it's um, easier to uh, read how it was uh, done by Birger in um, in a paper of 2004. And um, uh, so because this is the way how we do generalize it for higher dimensions, but this I will um, say a bit later. So, so far, like let's have an alphabet. And um, so a, a star here, it's, um, it's not the cis algebra, a star here, it's um, just all finite words in alphabet A and saying U is a prefix of V if V is can be presented as a product UV for some uh, word in A star uh, then what is the prefix called P over the alphabet A so it's a subset of um, a star actually, and no element of P is a prefix of any other uh, word. So 
saying P is a maximal prefix chord over A uh, if it's not a proper subset of any other prefix chord over A. Okay. And so I do realize that it's quite, quite technical, but we do, we do need this because I still want to give a little bit of um, details. So if R is the right ideal of A star, uh, then R, which is the product of P A star for a uniquely determined prefix code P. And um, so the P is uh, the unique minimal set of generators for, for R. So of course this, this would be like, um, series of lemmas, but I think the best, uh, the best reference, it's, it's maybe a paper of uh, uh, Birger 2004. Alina, is it yeah. like, ob uh, is, is it obvious that it's unique minimal set? No, 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 it's not, it's so not it's, obvious as I, as I said that it's a um, set of lemmas. So okay. every time it's a, it's a lemma, which is maybe not too difficult, but just I didn't, uh, Included in the talk, so that's why I said that the very good uh, reference. It's a uh, Birger 2004 paper. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. And it's it's really called like Thompson groups, and um, actually his original motivation was um, like comp uh, complexity, like the the word problem in Thompson groups, and it's actually this this way to look at um, Thompson groups. Uh, uh, in terms of prefix code is very good um, and very constructive in terms uh, of uh, solving complexity problems. Okay, then the right ideal is called essential if um, it's intersection with e every right ideal is empty and R equals P A star is essential if and only if um, uh, P is a maximal prefix code. Elena, you mean for essential that it should be non-empty? So, <laughs> for essential okay, you yeah, want yeah, to yeah, yeah. So this is, this is what, what, what happens when you, so you yeah, have yeah, an empty non-empty, non yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah. So this is what, Sorry. this is what, no, don't, don't hesitate to, See, to to look at the misprints because it's like as I said that the first time when when I give a talk online and the first time when I talk about the subject because it's really very involved subject and so it's very good to have such a broad audience because immediately like yeah it's clearly that um, it's like more semi group theory than standard geometry group theory right um, okay. So, but now we almost, so with this slide, everything is fine, right? Like, uh, just please look, look at it once more because I really want to, we, we have such a great audience that um, we want to see all the details. So mo modulo misprints, right? <laughs> um, okay, any questions about this slide? Okay, good. So now we are actually quite close um, to define them. Yeah, again, I see one, one more misprint, but okay. Uh, so uh, let um, uh, R1 and R2 be right, two right ideals. And a uh, uh, bijection phi between those uh, right ideals in, is an A star uh, isomorphism if um, phi of uh, uv equals phi of uv for all um, u from r1 and uh, v from a star and um, then a star isomorphism phi like from p1 a star to p2 uh, a star where p p1 and p2 are prefix codes uh, re restricts to all uh, to a bijection from uh, P1 to P2. And now an extension of, um, of an A star isomorphism phi uh, from R1 to R2 is an I star isomorphism and phi, uh, psi from a, uh, I1 to I2 of right ideals 
um, said that um, um, uh, I uh, belongs to uh, I AI I, and um, um, so phi uh, psi of u equals to phi of u for all uh, u from R1. And uh, phi is maximal if it has no proper extension. Okay, and also it's, uh, I don't prove it here, but this was um, done, for example, by, by Birger that uh, isomorphism phi between essential right ideals of a star uh, has a unique maximal extension. And now uh, we are ready to define the Thomson group um, VK1. So it's the group consisting of maximal isomorphisms between uh, finitely ge generated essential right ideals uh, with multiplication uh, of phi uh, psi equals to max of their composition where actually uh, the, uh, this kind of composition, uh, we, we look at the composition of partial functions. Okay, any questions about this slide? Uh, what's K here? Is it the cardinality of A? In the notation VK1. Which K, yes, ah, VK1. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, 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 it's the cardinality of the alphabet. Yes, yeah, so this is from the previous, previous slide. So the K was the number of, um, of elements in the alphabet. Okay. okay. Thank you. So if we, for, for, for example, if uh, K equals to two, then it's original Thompson group V. Okay, so very, very good. So, now we define sister algebras, we define the Thomson groups, and um, so what is, what is the relation? And apparently, uh, Thomson, uh, representation of Thomson groups in sister algebra turns out to be quite interesting subject. And um, again, in the same paper of Birger, uh, he was um, looking, um, constructing representations of uh, Thomson group and sister algebras using words. And actually, Berger was aware of uh, trees that um, uh, when we talk, I, I think, of course, we uh, all know that um, Thomson groups can be also defined in terms of uh, trees. and um, also, like if we talk about prefix codes, what is the kind of geometric realizations of um, uh, what are the geometric realizations of um, prefix codes? Uh, we can think about it as finite trees of certain shape. But actually, if you work in um, somehow one-dimensional Thomson-like groups, um, you don't really need trees, you, you can really get away with words. But uh, what um, uh, I would like to kind of explain, at least start starting explaining that if we think about higher dimensional realizations of Thomson groups in terms of prefix codes, then the geometry becomes essential because it's quite difficult to continue to work only with algebraic subjects, uh, with algebraic objects, especially if you go to dimensions three and higher. Okay, and um, uh, another appearance of uh, uh, Thomson groups in sister algebras, it's, um, uh, it's uh, uh, Juan Jones and his school, and they, work on like theoretical physics and uh, actually this is something very interesting which I would like to to understand more because uh, these um, connections seem seem to be quite quite interesting and as I already mentioned I'm uh, interested in like first of all higher higher dimensional generalizations of Thomson groups 
but then also how to distinguish them, right? Because it's always, always a question, how do you say, okay, but how, how do you know that you constructed something new even so the setting is different? And here, sister algebras turn out to be very, very useful because there are already invariants for sister algebras which are developed to, to really distinguish sister algebras because uh, sister algebras it's already quite um, quite an old subject and it's it's also not easy to to distinguish um, sister algebras but actually we are quite lucky those sister algebras which correspond to uh, to the higher dimensional thomson groups uh, they are so called sister algebras uh, they are so called kirchberg sister algebras and they can be classified by their k theory okay so but now so any any questions so far this is just kind of a plan so and I, now I need again, I think many of you saw, saw those definitions which I give of buildings many, many times, but I need them again because um, um, as, as I already mentioned that for Thomson groups, we can work with trees and think we, for example, we work with um, infinite trees. And when we talk about prefix codes, we just think about, um, Finite, um, uh, finite trees, uh, finite subtrees of those infinite trees with certain properties. But for them, uh, for the Thomson group, we need instead of trees, we do have to go to building-like complexes. Okay, so let me remind the definitions. So think n-dimensional Euclidean or hyperbolic building. It's an n-dimensional complex X such that X is a union of n-d spaces called apartments. Then for any two chambers, there is an apartment containing both of them. And if two apartments, F1 and F2 have non-trivial intersection, then there is an isomorphism of uh, uh, of those apartments fixing their intersection point wise. And of course, um, if you just think about a tree, a infinite tree, it's also, it's also a building, but just of course we don't, um, we don't need it. Uh, we don't need all those um, axioms of a building when, when we work with, um, with trees. But, but nevertheless, so let's um, look at um, trees as um, uh, one one dimensional building so um, as many of you know how how i how i look at buildings i uh, construct some finite uh, finite objects and then uh, buildings appear as their um, universal covers and um, yeah so this is an example of um, a polyhedron which is glued from from seven triangles with um, words on the boundary so this is also how how i get um, uh, how i get complexes that um, i take a set of polygons and then write some words on the boundary and then and then define sides with the same letters respecting orientation okay and again a link of course everybody maybe remembers but just to to remind that um, um, the link, it's an intersection of a sphere of a very small radius um, uh, centered in a vertex of a graph with the polyhedron uh, itself. Okay, and then also we are interested in like thick polyhedra which, uh, and thick buildings. We want to have at least um, three polygons meeting and at the same uh, edge and uh, we can look at quite um, complicated examples so to get to get the interesting complexes we also need uh, interesting links 
So we need graphs of uh, uh, diameter saying M and girls to M. Um, yeah. So, and um, again, reminder how I, I look at buildings. So it's actually Misha Brin, right? It's uh, not Matt Brin. It's this old, um, old result of Balman and Brin that how we look at buildings, we get them as universal cover of uh, polyhedra with nice links. And um, so a while ago, I introduced um, uh, the so-called poly polygonal presentation, which is a set of words say, satisfying certain combinatorial properties. And, um, but still for a while, it didn't have that many applications okay like if you if you construct buildings uh, in in this way so then if you construct a building as a universal cover uh, of a finite complex then you have uh, its fundamental group acting uh, com compactly on a building which is uh, which is nice but then still like there were also other constructions of buildings so saying it's not, it was not clear why saying my construction is maybe better than anything else. But then um, this kind of new application with um, sister algebras uh, turned out to be quite interesting. But then moreover now it turns out that um, these um, constructions like of polyhedra and buildings as universal powers of polyhedra can be, can be used to uh, to construct um, higher dimensional generalizations of, of Thomson groups. And uh, what is somehow the key, maybe I will not be able to give all the definitions because actually when you go to higher dimensional generalization of Thomson groups, uh, everything becomes quite technical, but um, uh, I can just highlight what is, um, uh, what is the use of this uh, kind of construction of a, uh, building as a, a universal cover of a, um, some of a finite complex, it's that um, our prefix codes now are not, um, don't correspond anymore to finite trees, but they correspond to finite uh, uh, subcomplexes of a building such that uh, they uh, each each such complex defines uh, a partition of the boundary of the building into disjoint subsets. Okay, I will I will talk about it more later. But uh, now let's talk about um, ND-dimensional words. So in my <laughs> introduction of a Thomson group in terms of prefix codes, we started with the words, right? So maybe even I should come back to Lena, our... ND dimensional, this is N times D? No, 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 oh, N, I mean N dimensional. N dimensional, right. ah. Yeah, yeah. No, it may be, it's like 3D, we don't say 3 multiplied by and D, D right? Okay, I see, yeah, right. Yeah, uh -huh. it's, I don't know if it's a good, it's like maybe about, about words, it's maybe the second time I'm talking about, and but in about all the things together, it's the first time I'm talking about, so I'm, I'm very happy if you give any comments. It's, as I said, it's more like to give ideas than to give like very, very rigorous experience. I just think that it is either ND words or N-dimensional words. Yeah, 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 no, you're because right. D-dimensional, it's like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, it's like I said that it's... Like praise current of prices. Yeah, 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 <laughs> indeed. So, saying, uh, yeah, so here I said like N-dimensional buildings. So now let's talk about Euclidean buildings. And... Um, and equipped with this co-compact action of a group. So saying, if you, if you look at a building as a universal cover of a polyhedron, so you, you may think, uh, put some arrows and um, letters on the sides, uh, on the edges of the polyhedron. So when you go to the universal cover, uh, 
then you get a kind of natural natural decoration or on the building so for example in in that um, example which i which i give here right so what uh what happens here is like if you glue those seven triangles you you get a uh, you get a complex actually which has just one vertex and seven faces and then when you uh take the universal cover you get um, uh, this graph as a link and then all um, uh, edges in your in your building will be decorated by those uh, letters like 0 1 uh, x1 x0 x3 and so on so this is the decoration of um, of the building but then uh, what are those um, uh, and the words, they are rectangular subsets of apartments of the building decorated by, by the action of gamma. So even if you're uh, saying the uh, chambers of your buildings are triangles, still you can arrange them into kind of parallelograms. And those like big parallelograms with, um, with uh, decoration coming from, from the from the alphabet like 0, 1, 0, 2, and so on. Uh, th they are ND dimension, ND words. In that right? example, so think in, in dimension two, you have uh, like two, two dimensional rectangles, but then in, uh, in higher dimensions, uh, you, do have, you do have cubes. You do have, yeah. In, in the example of the triangles, is the group acting on that the cyclic group of order seven? Ah, uh, so this uh, this is this is just a, just a chance uh, on the finite. Of course, on the finite uh, complex, you do have a cyclic group acting like uh, of order seven, but it's just kind of nice nice example. It's Oh, no, just a second, uh, Alina. So, in your yeah. definition of this n-dimensional world, you insist that they be contained in an apartment, right? So they cannot. Yeah, 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 they are contained uh, in an apartment, indeed. Uh, so, it, in the one-dimensional case, this is still like an analog of something which is contained in a line, right? So it doesn't run. Yes. Yeah, so, in a, in a, uh, indeed. So you see that in in one-dimensional case, we don't we don't have a problem at all because we just write letters one after another. Right, you can, of course, you can also think that they, they do live in a tree, right? And just you, you take some pass, pass in a tree, but it's, uh, you, don't, you, don't have, you don't have any problem. So basically, you, you have a labeled uh, three, a tree, right? And then... Uh, yeah, yeah, you have a, you have you a labeled tree. Pass, and this okay. is like this um, situation which we discussed with Ilya that now maybe I will, I will switch... Um, but this like, like this, to stop uh, share, right? I will stop and share and I will I will show. So do you do you see yes, them? I think. Yes. Yes. Sort of. Uh -huh. So these are examples of multi-dimensional words. Yes. So this is two-dimensional word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you so now. Share screen. Yeah. So this is like two-dimensional two words, but then you can also, if it's um, uh, later on, I will have examples of um, like squares. Saying if you have a for, for a product of two trees, you would have a polyhedron consisting of squares, and then the universal cover is a like product of two trees, but then the apartments are planes tessellated by squares, and then you take like a rectangular region in a plane tessellated by squares. So these are your words. Yeah, and then, so, okay, any, any questions about the words? Because it's, um, it's uh, important, it's like, Really, it's analog of the words. Okay, so now, now we want to define the boundary of the building. 
and the boundary of the building, it's um, I do have a question. Uh, equivalence classes of sectors. So how, how we define a sector? Uh, uh, Alina, I think there was a question. Yeah. Uh, is, there there a question? A, is there anything corresponding to the root of a tree in this uh, construction? Ah, so actually it's a, it's a very, very good question. So in this construction, which I explain now, we just pick any vertex and it's, it's going to be an analog of a, of a root. But you you just pick, take... You, you do pick one? Yeah. Uh, so I actually had another question. This n-dimensional work, do you require them to be connected? Uh, uh, on this, uh, yeah, yeah, they are. They are, of course, they are. They, they are, are connected. They are parts. They are parts of the apartment. Uh, yeah, but uh, an apartment. Yeah, is and the rectangular, rectangular subset. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's really like um, rectangular, rectangular region. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, and then. Um, what uh, then again let's look at, at a building and then as Matt said that we take some distinguished vertex and then we take um, uh, we can look at the sectors but then here actually with all the settings with sister algebras now we even it's really great to have such specialists in the audience because actually we need to distinguish even uh, we, we can work in two settings so one setting when we can pick a point in the in the building, but there are also situations where. Uh, so, so what I'm talking about now, we can just uh, say that we don't have a distinguished vertex, and we uh, take uh, equivalence classes of sectors. And uh, if you don't have a distinguished vertex, we just say that uh, uh, two sectors are equivalent if their intersection contains a sector. So it's, um, yeah, and then, so what is the ND prefix code? It's a subcomplex of a building which corresponds to a partition of the boundary into disjoint sets. And for, for a tree, it's again, no, no problem at all because um, we, you just take finite, um, finite trees but what happens, for example, for, for the group 2V, we would need to look at such lampshades where there are four squares glued, um, glued together, and this would be kind of analog of a carrot. But this like really becomes quite, um, quite technical. Um, okay, so another, Sort of um, source of examples. It's like uh, groups, um, which um, which are fundamental groups of um, more like square complexes, such that the universal cover it's a product of trees. And um, here, I just um, give like two trees, but then later on I will have examples acting on products of three trees. And actually the most interesting things do appear in their, uh, start to appear in the dimensions three and higher because um, for, for three dimensional case, we cannot have an analog of them, um, of, of this interpretation of Thompson groups in terms of um, interval exchange. So it's, uh, of course, for a talk, it would be too much, but in our uh, paper with Mark Lawson, uh, there is an example of a three-dimensional three prefix code, which uh, cannot be, which is somehow counterintuitive. Um, okay, so this is, this is the building. What, in, what, in what yeah. sense counterintuitive? Uh... Uh, so, which corresponds, um, so, so saying in, uh, in uh, uh, two, saying in one dimensional case, you can just chop uh, your inter unit interval and then you take uh, the right hand side of, or left hand side 
uh, but saying for a cube, uh, there is a, such a partition of a, of a cube into five parts, which you cannot uh, obtain by just chopping um, um, each side like by two. So there are like such five pieces which, um, which, which correspond to some kind of really like counterintuitive partition of the, of the prefix code. Yeah. But as I said, the, like the, the reference, it's like even, even in, the first, in the first page of our paper with um, Mark Lawson, we, um, we kind of have a reference to this. Um, it's, um, uh, it's kind of um, strange prefix codes, which you wouldn't um, expect just, just from the general algebraic uh, way of looking at, um, at uh, saying um, several alphabets. So it's where, where indeed this kind of building like structure start, start to appear. Mm -hmm, okay. Um, uh, okay, so it's um, saying cube complex, we can also um, get um, three dimensional cube complexes using uh, quaternions. It's like um, in our paper with, uh, with Jakob uh, Sticks. So it's just so saying why why to use quaternions because when we want to get a cube complex such that its universal cover is a product of three trees, but then moreover if we want uh, that our the fundamental group it's not just a kind of a, a direct product of several free groups but some kind of no, non trivially reducible uh, lattice, uh, then we need to work a little bit harder and uh, find some kind of ways to look at them, um, at them kind of more involved uh, constructions. So I talked about this, I think last, last year in New York, but it's just um, uh, this um, example of, um, so this is maybe the easiest example of a, um, a group acting on a product of, um, three trees which is in the same time like a reducible lattice but then again it can be used uh, to to get um, examples of higher dimensional uh, thompson groups when you look at the it's like for the construction of the prefix codes and uh, yeah as i already mentioned that it would be really hard to give all the um details of our construction with Lawson, but um, um, yeah, so I refer to our paper, but it's just kind of to give a flavor that uh, we are in some sense um, generalizing the construction of uh, Birger, but uh, what is the difference that in one dimension, like the prefix codes correspond to uh, finite trees, but in um, uh, in higher dimensions, you do have many, uh, many complexes and uh, also many group actions on buildings. And actually every uh, group action on a building gives you a set of prefix codes where you can define a, a higher dimensional Thompson group. And now we come to kind of, um, so, Actually, this is more, I will, I will skip it um, for the moment. Uh, so then, uh, what, what is the point? Uh, then, okay, we have saying every group action, a Kokompa group action on a building would give us set of prefix codes and it would give, give us high dimensional generalization of a Thompson group. But then the question is, how to distinguish those groups because who knows maybe it's just different reincarnations uh, of the thompson groups uh, which are already known uh, but the key thing is that with each such construction you can associate a sister algebra and then for the sister algebras there are tools to distinguish those sister algebras and actually, if sister algebras corresponding to the Thompson groups are not isomorphic, then the groups are not isomorphic either. And so what is the way to distinguish them 
test algebras, it's so-called, like it's computing so-called K-theory, but uh, again, like K-theory, it's very involved subject, but in the particular case of, of those test algebras, which are associated to, to the polyhedra, which I was describing before, uh, there is a very constructive way to compute their case theory, and it's again using the geometry, the geometry of, of the polyhedron. And then it's really quite nice, we can get different, different um, K groups. So what are the K groups? It's actually a billion groups, which, which are somehow similar to, it's a similar flavor to, to homology groups. Okay, so let's, let's see how much time I have because uh, uh, what I would like now to give more flavor about um, uh, cyst algebras to see to show how they are related to to the polyhedra. So, any questions so far? So, I don't know if I'm how much I'm going to talk about those higher dimensional algebras but at least I will I will explain like so constructions of so-called Kunzkrieger algebras which are related to to the construction of a tree uh, which is a universal cover over wedge of circles which I showed before and uh, this somehow gives the flavor how how those cyst algebras look like so saying let's have a free group on two generators and of course the Kelly graph is the homogeneous tree of degree four which I already showed and the word um, how we can think about the vertices of a tree it's like reduced words in in the generators of, of the of the free group but then also how we think about, we can think about the boundary of the tree, right? The boundary of the tree can be thought as a, a set of all semi-infinite words. And uh, so the boundary has a natural compact, totally disconnected topology. And um, think let um, um, omega of X be all semi-infinite words with the prefix X and um, omega of x is open and closed. And uh, also, if you just look at all, you, you have um, natural action of, um, of your group uh, on the, uh, on the uh, boundary, right? I think it's kind of quite familiar construction. It's what people do in the, in the Thompson groups as well. They look at the boundary at the, semi-infinite words, but also I think it's quite, um, quite standard. But then how we, what we do, we uh, define something which is called um, cross-product cross algebra. And here we have a little bit kind of baby representation theory and uh, uh, operator theory. So we look at them uh, so what is C of omega? It's um, continuous functions on the boundary. So this um, sister algebra, which is like cross product algebra, um, uh, C of omega uh, with gamma is generated by, by the continuous function of the boundary and uh, the image of a unitary representation uh, pi of gamma, right? So, such that, so this uh, action of alpha of gamma, so alpha of gf equals to pi of gf uh, pi star of g for like f, it's as I mentioned, continuous function on the boundary and gamma, it's an element of our free group. And um, so every such kind of, yeah, sorry? Your C of omega continuous functions on omega, continuous functions to where real complex each complex other. Complex numbers, I assume, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Complex numbers. hear that? Yeah. Oh, complex numbers, right? Yeah, because, oh, because okay. it's com complex because we are, we are okay. interested in sister algebra. Yeah. Okay. 
and then okay we we don't really need um, uh, the details i can just um, because i i have like um, i i de defined more details just to show how uh, how how the generators in relations of of this algebras do do look like but since i don't have that much time anymore i just want to uh, to get to the point that we we look at um, so called like partial partial isometries um, uh, in um, uh, from from this algebra and then with a bit of calculations we get uh, that um, uh, our sister algebra is uh, generate uh, have like in terms generators and relations so for every saying every element in of the generating set we have a partial isometry and uh, there is this um, kind of relation that uh, uh, s star x s x equals to the sum uh, such that um, y is not equal uh, y is not um, uh, equal to its inverse uh, c y s y s y star and uh, this is something which is like um, uh, those relations are quite famous they are called like uh, kunz krieger relations and they also uh, seem if you don't uh, look at the sister algebras but with the same set of relations uh, like what one jones calls it pythagorean algebra and it's quite interesting um, uh, set of um, uh, algebras so, but uh, I'm interested again in the higher dimension analog. So for, for this kind of Kunz-Krieger algebras, we know that the Thomson groups can be embedded in this, uh, this kind of algebras, but um, we are interested in like higher dimension analogs. And since I also manage, uh, since I also manage connection with dynamical systems, uh, uh, actually the um, uh, there is uh, we can we can think about the action of a um, of the free group on the on the tree as a um, one dimensional shift with the following um, transition matrix. So this matrix tells us where where we can go. But if you if you just uh, live on the on the four, four valent tree, uh, then we are just not allowed to go from a to saying a inverse but all others other possibilities are allowed okay and then this is like more general definition of sister algebras but then for sister algebras there is a way to compute so-called like k-theory and those k-theory groups are um, like abelian groups and if those uh, groups are different then we know that the groups are different but of course this case theoretical invariants they are not complete invariants because for example for groups uh, v and 2v uh, the case theory is the same but we know that the groups are different but what is lucky that for the higher dimensional analogs there are many examples which which are uh, distinguished by by their k theory okay yeah so i think i'm almost out of time so maybe better if you like ask questions but i was already telling in the beginning that the subject is very involved that it's even difficult just to explain what is the uh, uh, you, know, you still can talk for i mean another seven minutes or so so you don't have to stop now i think now you got to the interesting part so <laughs> ah, okay <laughs> okay so then let's 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 talk about um, uh sister algebras right so how how we define them right so instead of trees we look at buildings and the boundary is defined by equivalence classes of sectors and um, now we get a group which is a fundamental group of of a polyhedron defined earlier so maybe the easiest way to, to look at one of the my, my examples of saying squares uh, saying when we had like four squares and we glue them together we had a 
complete bipartite graph as a link and the universal cover was a product of trees. Or like my very first example of seven triangles, the universal cover was the A2 tilde building. It's also like gamma. Uh, yeah, so it's here it's a little bit technical. There are so-called type rotating automorphisms, but they actually don't need to be type rotating. It can be much more general. But uh, in this case, we still can um, define this cross product algebra in the same, in the same way where, uh, as I was defining it just for, for one tree. And uh, this is called like um, higher rank Kunz-Krieger algebra, but also such, um, uh, it's um, what is kind of interesting that uh, there is also another, a uh, whole world of people working with some um, so-called hiring graphs and um, their terminology is completely different from buildings and uh, so on and for for a while i was wondering if some some of their um, uh, examples or definitions uh, have something to do with those algebras which i was getting from buildings and um, uh, but it's completely, completely different setting. It's like more, more categorical setting. But then it turns out, it turned out that some of the examples do coincide. And how did I learn it? I learned it because, uh, because of the case theory. So they were completely different, like um, uh, sister algebras. But then case theory was um, uh, becoming the same, and then. Uh, it was clear that it was the same, the same algebra. I think Matt has a question. Matt? You have a Not hand. Not yet. Oh, that was from a long time ago. Ah, okay. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so how, how do we work with those um, uh, Kunz-Krieger algebras that um, in the uh, one dimensional case, I showed you a matrix and actually uh, that um, transition matrix for, for the one dimensional shift can be used to uh, get, um, uh, to compute the uh, case theory group. And in the uh, higher rank generalizations of uh, Kunz-Krieger algebras, we have a collection of uh, transition matrices and um, also those uh, transition matrices. So why also higher dimensional case? It's somehow more difficult because when you have several transition matrices, they have to satisfy certain compatibility conditions induced by the structure of the building. And then you kind of can compute um, the case theory groups. Uh, uh, using those uh, um, like shifts in k different directions, and they can give you like the um, uh, they they can give you k theory groups that distinguish your uh, Thompson groups. But actually, what what I would like to ask, and also since we have like such a great audience. Uh, what I think that maybe uh, the, uh, those kind of higher dimensional generalizations of Thomson groups can be obtained directly from these uh, transition matrices without going back to the uh, prefix codes and uh, going through or all the theory of like inverse semi groups, which we used with Mark Lawson that maybe just from the collection of the transition matrices uh, on, on the building, one would be able to get some kind of um, higher dimensional generalizations of Thompson groups. So thank you very much for your attention. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Alina. Thank let's, you. let's thank Alina for the talk. Oh, OK, yeah, are there any questions? Problem. So now is the time to ask questions and you can all un unmute yourself. So. Um, I'll go. Yeah. Um,
so you've raised, let's see, there's a lot. <laughs> so you've, you've raised the problem of isomorphisms and um, of course, beyond isomorphisms, there's arbitrary um, morphisms between objects. But more natural than arbitrary is embeddability. Um, I, I wasn't quite sure of the scope of, of the things that you were bringing up. Um, among the things that I heard was that um, lots and lots of different buildings give rise to lots and lots of different groups. So I would expect, if, if that's what you said, that um, it would not be too hard to build something that's not embeddable in the existing higher dimensional groups that are known. But yeah. do you have one? That, that is not embeddable? Have, have you put together one that you can prove is not embeddable in something that's already known? Yes, yeah, so for, for example, even with the, but as I said that it's, um, it's a work in progress, which still didn't, we, we, we are just um, uh, writing it up. But for example, for saying um, uh, this with, with, seven, uh, with seven triangles, so if you if you look at this group acting on the um, on the building, uh, you wouldn't get any. So the uh, the K series group will be different from any of the saying uh, like your groups. I don't know if anybody was 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 writing it up also computing for your groups, but for example, for two V. So in my language, yes. Yeah, so let's let's say like this that um, uh, in my language, um, uh, for example, group two V would correspond uh, to uh, four four squares where you write uh, commutators like saying a one commutator of a one and uh, b one, a one and b two, a b two. So, so saying commutators of a1, a1, a2, and b1, b2. And then if you, if you like run this um, uh, machinery, then um, you get- you're, you're, um, you're giving me detail. But I yeah, yeah, so you, you I, just, no, no, so, no, yeah, like, so saying that- uh, I, I would like to interrupt you. <laughs> you're giving me detail, but I don't hear you saying the words, yes, we have an example that does not- Yeah, yeah, but just not, not one example, series of examples. That do not embed. Yeah. In, in any of the NVs. Okay. And the technique there is to use the C star algebras associated yeah. with them. Okay. Um, no, I saw that you want an example. Oh, no, I just wanted to know if there was one. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be capable of understanding the details at this point. Um, you, you have ways of building groups in this manner. Uh, these groups have lots of subgroups. Um, is it known which subgroups arise in this manner as well? Because the no, actually, it's still quite group. it's still quite general about the subgroups. It would be very very interesting. So then, uh, actually, there are a lot of a lot of questions because it's really just uh, uh, just the beginning. Because uh, yeah, so it's uh, subgroups. What are the subgroups? What are what are the presentations? Because uh, also, what I'm very much interested, I'm very much interested to compute presentations more explicitly because uh, I have an idea for much finer invariants than the uh, sister algebras. Because, for example, like uh, I have an invariant in mind which would uh, uh, say, like uh, this example with V and 2V. So the case theory doesn't distinguish V and 2V, but this new invariant which I have in mind would distinguish all, all existing examples, but so far I didn't manage to prove that this, this is a complete invariant. No, I, I, was, I was more curious, I mean, these things have lots of very complicated subgroups and I would be surprised if every subgroup, um, we need a name here, your, your, your groups need names. Um, these, these are building groups, can we call them building groups? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Provisionally, at least for the day. Okay, so let's let's call them building groups for at least the next five minutes. Um, I would be very surprised if every subgroup of a building group was a building group. 
but I was just wondering if no, uh, very unlikely, very unlikely, because then uh, yeah, it right. would. Um, so I was just wondering if which ones were and which ones were not was there was some sort of understanding. Yeah, no, it it would be very interesting to know. Yeah, I, I will write your question. Okay. Um, the last thing is I have my favorite challenge, but I'm I'm not sure that this is the appropriate place for it. Um, there's uh, the group F4, which is the Thompson group. Um, so I guess it's the Thompson group on four letters in which order has to be preserved. Um, you, you order the letters and you lexically order the infinite words and uh, the, the Thompson group elements that preserves this order would be F4. And then there's a group that I've been calling pseudo F4 Ah. because it looks like F4 in every possible way. Um, and I have no way to distinguish them. Um, I would like ah. to believe they're different. And Very so interesting. But where is the description of this F4? Well, uh, well, F4, it doesn't mean... No, no, not F4, but pseudo F4. Yeah. Um, so I can, I can bring up something and attempt to share it. Yeah, maybe, um, Alina, could you stop sharing uh, your screen? I might, I might <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so now the next question is, uh, okay, uh, what happens if I click on that and I click on share? Yes. Uh, has see. anything happened that's... Yeah, uh, yes, we see a PDF file. Oh, son of a gun. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so uh, where I have my cursor, is that clear? Mm -hmm. Those two pictures of the technical word are bumps. Um, so the one on the left is F4, the one on the right is pseudo F4, and each bump represents a homeomorphism of an interval that is shifting things from left to right. The left end of the bump is a fixed point, the right end of the bump is a fixed point. And the question is how much does it shift? And the answer is that uh, it should shift things very, very close from the left end point to extremely close to the right end point. So we have the sinks and the sources and the sinks and the sources should all be disjoint. And with that information, I can guarantee you that the collection of four bumps on the left is F4. And you'll just have to take my word for it. And the collection of four bumps on the right either is F4 or it's not F4. And I would like somebody to prove that it's not F4. Um, so uh, I don't know if this would fit into your machinery because while F4 probably does, I don't know if the thing on the right does. It is a subgroup of F4. In fact, they each embed into each other but I don't know that they're different. Yeah, can you, sh can you send out this paper? Uh, it's not a paper. This is a, an Obervolfach report of ah, talks. Okay. And so I can certainly send that to you. All right. Uh, are there any other questions? Okay, if not, let's thank Karina again. Thank you, Rina. Good. Thank you everybody for coming uh, and next week we have uh, Paul Shoup, so he will be talking about uh, things which are much more related to logic and recursion theory, but uh, nevertheless there will be some connection to group theory as well. <laughs>